Uh, so we are here with Nancy Lindsay. Um, and she is one of our wonderful artists from the five. So I'm going to start with a brief bio of her. Uh, Nancy Lindsay was born in Lincoln, Nebraska, and art has always been her primary interest, even as a young child. She studied art at Colorado State University and worked for many years in the commercial printing industry as a designer. Uh, while raising three children, she began painting seriously in the 1980s, and encouraged by other artists, she began entering and winning competitions. Uh, later on, she attended the Art Students League of New York and was a student of William Scharf. Nancy moved to Iowa in 1998 when she discovered the beauty of the Iowa landscape, which we're all grateful for. Uh, Lindsay currently resides near Stone City, Iowa with her husband, Lee, who is on for tech support today. So we're all thankful for Lee. Uh, so just to start, Nancy, um, do you just want to tell us a little bit about how you were introduced to art and kind of what started your, your love affair with it? Well, I think my true love affair with art um, came with my painting. Um, the commercial the printing industry wasn't very uh, creative of a job, but uh, when I started painting uh, in oil paints uh, and especially uh, moving here to Iowa, um, so many painters uh, that I knew were painting plein air and I was invited to join some of those groups and uh, uh, met some lovely people. And I was introduced to many of the parks in Iowa. Um, uh, Wapsie Park is near where I live. And in fact, two weekends ago, the plein air, Iowa plein air paper, painters were there. And uh, uh, then we have this wonderful park uh, on the other side of us here called um, Matzel's. I think it's called Matzel's Bridge natural area. In fact, one of my paintings that I have in the show that maybe we'll talk about later mm -hmm. um, is from Matzel's. It's from a photo I took there. And uh, I just was very fortunate to be able to have many of my landscape paintings placed in commercial buildings, thanks to Janelle McLean and uh, Corner House Gallery. She uh, trusted me and gave me some really great commissions, very some very large scale um, pieces that are uh, in care, healthcare facilities. Well, ma mainly Mercy Hospital, but I have some in St. Luke's as well, and um, in other healthcare facilities. But uh, um, I'm continuing in that direction, and I continuing to challenge myself with more and more projects. <laughs> That's wonderful. I know you've had a lot of, lot of success getting your work into buildings, which is fantastic. So it sounds like you were always drawn to landscape as an artist. Is that true? Well, that's very true. Uh, from the, in, in the beginning, uh, very beginning, going back to junior high, I wanted to draw portraits. And so I did a lot of drawing of portraits and ballet dancers and things like that. Um, but they weren't very good. And, and uh, I just, I just uh, caught into the direction of lands because it seems like that's what people were looking for mm. and in specific locations. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite type of scene to paint or one that you feel like you're really good at capturing? Well, I like, I like, uh, I like a, a feel of, uh, of uh, atmosphere and uh, uh, emotion and, and that sort of thing. So usually it's a, a landscape that's maybe towards evening or early morning. And then you get the feel of it and uh, you kind of try to capture it in your mind because, you know, if you're going to do a large painting, you can't do it on plein air. You, you have to take it back to the studio and finish it. Mm -hmm. So um, I try to capture those in photographs with the light and, um, and then try to recreate them in my studio. And that's wonderful. And kind of co-opted my next question, but I'm going to bring up some of your beautiful works that are in the exhibition, The Five, so we can look at those. 
And you mentioned Matt Sells. Yes, I believe this is Matt Sells in September. Yes, that, that's quite a large painting. I can't remember the size of it, but. Um, yeah, it is very big. It's, it's a it's a pretty good, pretty good size painting. And it uh, has fall colors. And I, that's why I call it in September. That's usually when a good time to go walking. Mm-hmm. And that's an area where years and years ago, my husband Lee would go go hunt deer hunting <laughs> so he was familiar with the air the area and so we would walk the trails and, oh that's uh, lovely and this painting I I just sometimes struggle with the color green mm-hmm. I don't know if anyone else does but green is a really hard color for me and and uh so as you can see there's not very much green in this painting <laughs> I like the, I like the warm skies. Mm -hmm. One thing that I definitely associate with your paintings is just that they are these riots of color and areas, you know, that a child or myself, because I'm not a very good artist, you know, a child would depict as just like a big puffy green ball. You find all of these wonderful hints of other colors and complementary ones and ones that you wouldn't expect. Um, So that's definitely something that I associate with your art. So I, it's interesting to hear you say that green is a challenge for you because I think you handle it in this really beautiful and very interesting way. Well, you have to gray it down. That's really yeah. All right, if, if I put a put a complementary color in it, to put a little bit of bit of red in it, and uh, it uh, it'll tone it down a little bit. Oh, sure, makes sense. So could you kind of walk us through your process from inspiration to finished painting and how we get sure. from A to B? Sure, I, I um, start with a canvas. I, I kind of have a few canvas in my inventory. When they're going, they go on sale, I, I buy up quite a few and I, various sizes and I'll, I will um, start with that, look at it, study it a while and think, well, what would look the best in this this format of a canvas, you know, whether it's a panorama shape or square. And then I go through my photos and I'm thinking, well, what has inspired me lately if it's a new photo that I've taken? Um, And then maybe I will have a palette of colors that um, I really enjoy, a a harmonious palette of colors. And sometimes I have a neutral palette. Mm. And it just depends on the feel and it, it may stay, start out that way, but that doesn't mean that it's going to end up that way. So um, I will do some sketches. Um, I will block in things with a watered down acrylic on my canvas and kind of see how things look. And then later I start in adding my brush strokes of oil. Mm. and uh, blend them. Sometimes I texture them. Uh, sometimes I use a painting knife, which adds um, a new di- whole new dimension. And, I, and a painting knife, when you paint with a painting knife, the painting goes much quicker because if it dries, you're in trouble. So you have to kind of start in the morning on a paint with using a painting knife and keep at it all day long until evening and you might be able to rework it a little bit the next day, but it's pretty much, you better get it done. And that's wonderful. Do you have, is it easy for you to know when a painting is done? Is that a challenge? Like, do you get a feeling or is it tempting to just keep zhuzhing a little bit? Well, like I, I just think I'm, I'm just trying to fix things that look broken. <laughs> Hmm. If I look and I look at a painting and I'm thinking, well, you know, this doesn't look right here. I keep adding, then I start subtracting. And then I, if I'm, I'm not sure what's wrong with it, but I know there's something wrong with it. I turn it upside down and I study it upside down. In fact, there's a lot of times I will paint maybe a third or fourth of the painting upside down. Oh, Especially wow. with you're dealing with branches, mm. the branches, when you, you know, pull the branches down, if you mm-hmm. have it upside down, 
the branches will flow um, much more normally if you look at it upside down with the strokes. And branches can be dangerous in, in, in some ways. If I'm painting a winter painting with very few leaves, like I am right now and down in, downstairs, I have a, I just get tangled in those branches. I start, start in and I think, well, this leads with this, 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 this. And then I start eliminating some of those branches. And uh, it's, it, it's kind, kind of tiresome and it's kind of painful mm -hmm. because you don't think you're making much progress. And then you have to just let it sit and wait. Mm -hmm. And I'll work on, right now I have uh, six paintings that I'm working on at the present time. I worked on two of them this morning. And uh, it, one of them was that tangled branch <laughs> painting. And uh, it looks a lot better now. Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, I think that I feel a little better about it. And, and some of the other paintings that I have going are on various stages of completion. Mm -hmm. And I usually you know, keep working on, I'll alternate and work on one and then the next, you know, in an hour and then the next to the next hour. I work about eight hours a day, mm -hmm. every day. And uh, it, it, uh, it, you know, I can make progress when I'm, when I'm doing, doing maybe six paintings at a time. Mm -hmm. So you like to hop around between. Yes. Work. Yes. You know, I use the same, you know, painting palette mm -hmm. that has the same colors and I tend to kind of mix on my palette. I don't pre-mix necessarily unless it's something that I'm going to do a large you know, square inch section of a, of a particular shade of, then I mix it ahead of time. But most of the time I mix things on my palette. That's so fascinating. And especially about the branches. Cause I, when I look at so many of your paintings the branches to me seem like the letting in a stained glass window. Like they kind oh. of give this beautiful outline and form to the luminous colors that you have. Well, that's, I've, I've never heard this, the stained glass uh, comparison, but that's a good one. Yeah, that's always what I think of with your paintings. So we can, speaking of branches, we can move on to Out of the Shadows, which is one of my favorites that's in our exhibition. I, I know when you pointed to it, I, when you were in my studio, I, the same time I was thinking, you know, I'm not real. I, I really like it, but I don't know if anybody else will. Mm -hmm. And you pointed to it right away and said, I want that one. So I did. I really love this large one. scale painting. It's probably, I think maybe 36 by 40. Something yeah, like it's that. quite large. Yeah. Yes. And it's, it goes back to I, you know, a trunk, tree trunks are a challenge too. And I love to do a variety of tree trunks. And around here, a lot of the tree trunks are so similar. Um, oh, we have different trees, but they're, the trunks aren't nice and thick like these. And so I just, th these are mainly out of my head. Mm. And I had the background in and I had blocked in the, the trees. And uh, they actually became wider as I was I was painting and this mm. one, the one in the main, on the right side foreground, um, I was trying to, to get the texture of, of bark along that. And uh, so it, it turned out okay. I didn't go wild with my branches. I could have. <laughs> yeah. No, this one is, I just keep using the word luminous, but I feel like this really captures the kind of glowy trees that we have in autumn right now. Those right. really bright oranges and yellows. Yeah, and I like how the sun will capture the tops of trees. Mm -hmm. I have a whole series of paintings that I call sunlit treetops, mm -hmm. and where the sun has has brought a warmth to the very tops of the trees. Yeah, versus these beautiful cool shadows, and I think the shadows of the branches across the trunks are really beautifully done here. Yeah, and that's kind of hard to do when you're doing it out of your head. Oh gosh, I bet. 
if I had, if I was working from a photo, you know, I'd see more distinctly where the, where the shadows mm-hmm. are. Yeah. You'd be able um, to just like plot it in of like, okay, this is hitting right there. Right. Right. And yeah, that'd be much more difficult just kind of coming up with the light source and the shadow out of your own imagination. Right. Mm. Well, in the third painting, okay. that yeah, about. this is a view. This one is a is a view. Well, I don't know. On my screen, the colors don't look quite right, so maybe I don't know. It's a lot. the The trunks in the actual painting are more um, saturated. They're more orange, mm-hmm. where the sunlight is shining on them towards evening, and that's in our woods right behind my studio here, um, off to the back it's kind of towards the Wapsie River if you go through those trees and down a hill you'd be uh, right on the banks of the Wapsie River Um, but these trees are were here uh, when we moved here since then my husband has planted I don't know 200 more trees so actually getting that view from our house it you you know you won't see it anymore because it's covered more trees and this one looks like it has, oops, excuse me, a thicker application of paint than the previous. Yes. I, th- I think I was using, yeah, I, I kind of fluctuated in wanting to use a, a impasto or a painting, you know, painting knife to work because I love the texture. And I think I started out with that and I have that um, replicated in the trees. Um, but the background is a little bit smoother. The the darks, mm. the the dark background is a little bit smoother and more brush strokes. Yeah, and I've certainly known your paintings to go both ways. Some are very thick and kind of jewel encrusted, like this one, and some are more smooth, like probably the previous two. And do you just feel it out? Is it, do you determine it kind of by what you feel like or what you feel like best suits the scene? It's kind of how I feel. If I've been, if I've been struggling with the paint, with the painting, um, I want to go straight to that knife and start (laughs) using, using it with thick layers. But of course I can't really do it on a very large canvas. This one I think is like 16 by 20. Mm -hmm. It's pretty small or smaller. It's fairly small. Then you can get get by with it, but I have started some paint. I have one downstairs right now that I'm working on that's quite huge. That I started out with impasto, mm. and it is. Um, I think it's probably I think maybe ten feet long. Oh my goodness! And, and uh, six feet tall, and I started out it in in a thick impasto, but. I'll tell you, I'm not finished with it yet. I, I keep, I keep looking at it and I've been painting on it a little bit this week. So that's um, huge. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's, it is huge. Um, um, and um, someday maybe it'll find a place to go. <laughs> it needs a I big wall know. for sure. It cries it, out for a big that's wall. Right. And it, it is kind of dark and mm-hmm. I'm trying to lighten it up a little bit. Um, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's a work in, in progress. Well, it sounds amazing. And I know we didn't chat about this, but I just thought it was so interesting that you were also doing this kind of different series that's still landscape, um, but it's just very different from your painting. So I don't know if you could tell us anything about your Horizon Grande series. Okay. Yeah, I... I, I, I don't know if you know Amy Bishop, but um, she lives in Mechanicsville and she's an artist and a good friend. And she kind of told me how, about what she was doing with similar process. And it's where you take paper, various, it's various kinds of paper. Um, she was using magazines and using solvent on them. And with the solvent on the magazine color, the inks just dissolve. And then you, depending on what it is, you'll end up with, you know, various colors. Well, in in addition to that, I started making my own uh, papers 
using a thin paper and pouring inks on the papers and trying to get different kinds of models and textures. And I would run, I think I see in that picture, that one I don't have uh, some of my stripes. I take a, a credit card and uh, cut little niches in it. And oh, then I'll cool. scrape it across uh, the paint and then let it dry. And, or I'll uh, make cross hatches on the ink and before it dries. Okay, then I can have all these various tubs full of paper <laughs> and I try to sort them according to color mm. and um, I tear them. I tear them in long lengths. I started out with blues and, and I started at the very top of the page and worked down. And if you tear your paper, the piece that you want to use up, that's the, that piece will not have the white raggedy edge mm. that you would on the other, if you tore down. Oh, so sure. I don't want to see any raggedy edges. So I always cut tear. And so these are all hand torn. And I start with different blues. I maybe had, I don't know, different, page, different pages of blues. And then I start in with some of my warm colors. And then of course, then, you know, you want to have uh, a feel of a horizon line. I did a series of three of these. And um, uh, this is one uh, that I put in the show just mm -hmm. to kind of give a, a little bit of, of a, a different feel to a landscape painting because it's all out of my head. I, you know, I put trees in, uh, you can kind of see those. And then I, but I'm tearing mostly diagonals. Uh, I mean, I tear long strips and then put them in um, horizon level up and down. And of course I try to keep my warmer colors towards the, towards the front, mm -hmm. but it's kind of fun. And I get to, you know, wrapped up in doing those and, and, um, you know, it's, it's just a break from painting. That's exactly what I thought. And I thought it was a really interesting addition to the exhibition because it's so different from, I think, what people know of your work and what you usually do. But yeah, it, it's, it turns out so beautifully. And I thought it also just kind of felt like a fun break from, you know, when you just need a moment from your painting styles, this is a different avenue you can pursue. Right. right. I, I enjoy doing this. And then I also do a lot of printmaking too. Mm -hmm. Which are also beautiful and learning about collagraphs and carborundum prints and um, collagraphs and carborundum and, uh, you know, relief prints. And I've been doing a lot of intaglio. Mm. So that's a break from painting too. But I, I spend now with COVID and we're home all the time. I have time on my hands. So I'm wow. doing a lot of, a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it sounds like you've been just learning a lot and immersing yourself in different processes. Yes, I have been have been doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was absolutely beautiful. So I will open it up for questions if anyone has any things specifically like Nancy to address that I didn't get to. When we're Mm -hmm. Hi, Nancy. Uh, Hi, Mike. Beautiful, beautiful work, of course. Um, I'm, I'm kind of curious from a technical standpoint. Uh, Kate mentioned the luminosity of your paintings, and they are incredibly luminous, beautiful uh, uh, paintings. But what uh, technique are you using to ensure that luminosity stays uh, in the painting and doesn't dry out? Um, I don't know that I've had a probably you're talking about varnish coats or yeah um, I, no, I'm, uh, what I'm curious about is I noticed when I looked at your paintings very carefully you, you're using kind of a, a lot of small strokes over some broad broad areas of color and I'm thinking that that's a technique that maybe Sarah used or some of those people and I, I was curious what you, how you achieved that, and what you were thinking when you did. I don't it. think, I don't know. There, I was giving much thought to it. 
<laughs> it just probably I looked at that spot and thought it needed a, a brush stroke of some sort of color. And um, I probably uh, just placed it there. Mm -hmm. But as far as I didn't know if you were talking about var you know, maintaining an even varnish coat or what you were referring to. No, I get, I get that. I, I was just curious about probably the paint marks more than anything else uh, because they seem to be so um, thought through and maybe they are happy accidents, but it, <laughs> I don't really believe in those anyway. But uh, uh, I was just curious whether you had a technique you used on all the canvases or whether it's just something that no. happens when it happens. It just happens. <laughs> It just happens. I, I just keep working on it and whatever I can do to pull it through, I will try. <laughs> I can always scrape it out. <laughs> yeah, Mike, I think you really hit, hit the nail on the head there about Nancy when she paints. Um, she, she really thinks about what she's doing. She looks at it and, and just keeps doing but it's like I think she just is innately drawn to do the thing she does on canvas and mm -hmm. um I've I've talked to her quite a bit about painting and I remember years ago she told me I said how do you get this warmth all the time and and I remember you told me it was an old Grant Wood trick remember that where you just painted all your canvases orange first oh yeah <laughs> I, and I did that I for a while. I use that so much, and it really, it does. It, it creates an orange depth to it, a warmth, so. Well, gosh, Debbie, we haven't, I haven't seen you for so long. I, I know. wish someday we could have coffee again. We will, we will. Okay. But it, it, Nancy, one of her, her gifts really is that she innately, just knows what she's doing and she does what she does better than anybody else. And Mike also has his style that is, and I've really never gotten to sit down and talk with him, but uh, another one just with nice, beautiful, bold colors too. So, and you know me, Nancy, I'm a colorist. I <laughs> yes, you are. That's for sure. Other questions for Nancy? Hey, Nancy, uh, Sean here. Uh, I had a question. Sean. What would you say? Hi. What would you say is um, the hardest aspect about capturing a landscape for you? Oh, it's it's sometimes getting muddled into too much detail, mm -hmm. and. Uh, so like I said before, sometimes I'm adding and then I'm subtracting and adding more and then subtracting more. So sometimes it's getting into too much detail, but I don't hesitate in putting in that detail because it kind of guides me through to the end. And I'm always thinking, well, I can always take this out, but right now this stroke is guiding me in this direction where I wanna go. And if I find out later that I need to take out some branches to make the composition a little better, it's easily removed. Mm -hmm. And okay. a separate, separate question for you. Do you prefer to paint en plein air or in your studio? Well, I love painting in plein air if it involves traveling to your places in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, and I do plein air uh, painting with our Iowa plein air painters here. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't been doing it as much as I did in the past uh, because I've been doing more studio studio work, and it just seems like you know carrying everything out um, and hauling it, setting it up, and and everything seems like you know. Do I really want to do that today? It's kind of cold out. It might rain. So I'll just stay stay home, but but uh, give me a chance to go paint the Amalfi Coast, and I'll be very happy painter. <laughs> I think all of the artists in the five need to go have a a beautiful holiday in Europe where they paint. Absolutely, I, I travel on Google Earth now that I can't travel. <laughs> 
Other questions? Hmm. Okay, I have one more for you. It's been years and years and years since I've been in your studio, but I do remember when I was there, you shared with me a, a whole bunch of rather old abstracts that you oh, had gosh. done at one point, which I thought were wonderful. Obviously they don't fit the parameters of this exhibition, but I thought that they were wonderful. Do you see that part of your career finding its way into um, these, uh, uh, these abstracted landscapes um, that, that, you, that we were talking about at the end here? Well, I love to paint abstract paintings. And I know that when I studied Art Students League, uh, I studied with William Scharf and he was an abstract painter. And uh, I just, I have rolls and rolls and that you probably never saw, Sean, of abstract paintings all rolled up in the back room. But I just can't, seem to market them I don't know you know if you're not if you have uh, right now I probably have eight to ten pretty good sized canvases that have that are all similar but different color palette that would really go well in a long you know a long uh, hallway or a big space of some kind but I can't get anybody interested in them. So I just stick to my um, landscape paintings, which seems to always find a place. Oh, interesting. Hmm. I remember Sean talking about those too, and remarking on how much he liked them. Other well, questions? Well, Sean, I'll probably be having a garage sale one of these. <laughs> well, let us know. I think we'll all be there. Yeah, be a group trip. Any other questions? I have a couple of comments and a question. If I could remember the question after I get through the comments. Um, <laughs> first of all, um, what, one thing I notice about uh, when you're doing trees and it's got a sky and branches and leaves is uh, how you handle the colors. And it seems like instead of just mixing colors. Well, you mentioned somehow about mixing a little bit of red in with the green to tone it down. But a lot of times in the sky, you've got such a gradation of a variety of colors and you're breaking down the color of the sky into kind of a spectrum of sometimes pastels. So, so it's not just a kind of a yellowish sky. It's got yellow, it's got pink, it's got, little bits of orange and red and you know little flecks of it little one stroke oh, here yeah strokes of purple or blue and and that effect just i think is stunning uh so you would do that so well and that uh you know when you go back to mike's comment about the luminosity i think that is kind of what brings the brightness and uh life to those backgrounds that you do um another thing about your technique you, I'm, i was just stunned when you said you you struggle with branches because i've never seen anybody that does it better than than what you do with uh you know you, you've got a branch and you've got light, light fading into dark and you've got a lot of depth in there and and just oh yeah i just can stare at those all day okay those are my comments and question is do you have oh, oh so lead into the question i live uh near ames uh, out in the woods um uh, but um so i see your work in the octagon uh the octagon ga uh, gallery the uh, shop there and uh, i'm always intrigued it's one of the highlights of the shop um but uh do you have a gallery somewhere where you have lots of your work well, I have galleries in Cedar Rapids at Gilded Pear. Oh, good. Um, I have, I'm at Artisan's Gallery in Iowa City. Um, I am in Dubuque and in Galena at Otlag Galleries. Um, and I'm, well, in Octagon in Ames. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm trying to think, oh, I'm trying to think, oh, Quad City Arts in wow. uh, Rock Island. Right. Has, has There's one work. more, Nancy. Uh, Mercy but, Hospital. It's like a yeah, go to Mercy <laughs> Hospital. <laughs> I hope you don't ever have to go there for mm. a heart or anything because I'm in my paintings are in a heart section, art okay. recovery <laughs> section. Okay. Well, well thanks. Thanks, Rex, for your kind comments. And I've been, I follow you on Facebook too and see that fabulous wooded area where you live and <laughs> that uh, Pentagon building oh, that you right, built yourself. Right, right over there. A couple hundred Pretty yards. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed, Rex, you have a beautiful wooded background to you and you're. Yeah. It's very appropriate for the conversation. I love the woods and uh, yeah, Nancy's paintings just really, you know, bring bring the life out in the woods. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, Rex, for your kind comments. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you so much, Nancy. That was wonderful and added a lot to my appreciation of your artwork, which I already loved. Uh, And thank you everyone for joining us. I hope everyone has a lovely rest of your weekend and be sure to come into the CRMA and see the five exhibition between now and January 16th. Thanks everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have a good afternoon.